What is Eternum? That depends on you. I am Razio. What's up guys, Raziel here, and all joking aside, this is my honest review of New World. Now, I have been in the New World, both of the uh, the first alpha and the first beta, and now this beta as well, and I've played all three, uh, and I'm going to give you my honest, unfiltered opinion, as always, so listen well. Again, take everything I say with a grain of salt, a lot of this stuff is subjective, and, uh, you know, you have to make a decision for yourself. God, I know, in this day and age, having to actually form an opinion on your own might seem difficult, but I'm here to help you along the way. Does that even work? Anyway. Okay. So, the first thing I'm going to say is New World Beta, from Alpha to the first Beta, didn't change hardly at all. And from the first Beta to this Beta, it changed quite a bit. Uh, essentially, they went to the Holy Trinity system, and uh, started, you know, adding in a lot more PvE type centric stuff because up to this point the game was very, very, very PvP focused. But I'll get more into that as I go because, you know, pro tip, it didn't change that much. So I'm just going to start by saying the things I liked about the game and then we'll get into the juicy hate stuff uh, a bit later. So good. The open world, the world that you're in is it's very good looking. The graphics are great. The atmosphere it sets you in, in terms of you know the the foliage and the size of the map and everything. It's all good. Very open world. Very MMO. You can see people running around everywhere, so it's good. The environment is good, but there's a caveat here which I'll talk about when I get into the bad stuff. Uh, the ambient noise in the game is pretty well done. You know, you can hear wind blowing in the trees and birds chirping and, you know, and whatnot. So, great mood setter there. Uh, but I'm sure a lot of you guys don't give much of a shit about that type of stuff. Maybe I'm in the minority when I look at those kinds of things. But the RPG elements that I'm going to list now uh, are done quite well. And it's something I've missed in an MMORPG for a while. But as you'll see when I get to the bad section, it's not enough to make up for the things that I, I don't like about the game. But that being said, the RPG elements such as the stat distributions, the fact that every time you level up, you can put points into strength, constitution, dexterity, focus, intellect, that type of stuff, is very good. That means you can make a build for your character depending on what weapons you are using. So that's good. Also you have to use the weapons to skill them up. So as the more you use like a sword and shield or the more you use a, you know, a, a great hammer, you're going to unlock points to spend in that where you actually unlock abilities and you unlock, you know, different passive effects for using said weapon. Now the, it seems like a very good starter point. And as you'll look and I'll show you on screen now, you can also see that points in Constitution Strength also unlock other things as you get higher and higher in those point distributions. So it makes you want to make a build focused on one or two stats, uh, maybe three at the most essentially, but you can't, as far as I know, you can't be a master of all. But you can learn to use all weapons and you can respec if you want to. Uh, other RPG elements we haven't seen in an MMO for a long time is the burden and encumberment system wherein your character can only carry so much. As you level up, you can unlock more slots for bags which let you carry more. If you become over encumbered, you can't run or dodge or do any of that stuff anymore. So this is something that I haven't seen in a long time and it's very, very welcome. It makes you more conscious of your inventory, how much things weigh, what you want to keep, what you don't. And it's overall, I think, a another thing that can very much make you feel a part of the world in, in that regard. Uh, something else that I haven't seen to this point in most MMOs I've played is how health regeneration works in this game. When you are out of combat, health does not regenerate on its own. 
you need to eat rations, food that you've made through crafting, or drink potions uh, in combat, drinking a potion, or equipping a healing staff as your secondary weapon is the only way to self-heal in combat that I've been able to see so far. It may be wrong there. Again, I didn't play every single aspect of the game, but enough to get a general impression on the game overall. So when you're out of combat, you can camp. You can set up a camp uh, and you get a higher camping skill as you level up. And at your camp, you can craft crude materials. You can craft like arrows that aren't as good as like, you know, really good ones you can make or buy in villages. But, you know, if you run out of arrows in the middle of comp in the middle of the woods, you can craft some arrows or what what have you. And yeah, it's it's interesting. You can rest at the camp and you can also bind to the camp you set up. So if you die, that uh, becomes a possible location you can respawn now stat weights and skill trees as i mentioned earlier they're they're good they're really good but they feel kind of still base level i feel they could go a lot further and they probably will as the game goes on and they add more weapon types that you can find and things like that so at its foundational level it's good uh crafting in this game is another Another very, very well done piece of the game. The crafting is very extensive, though the negative part of it, I would say that it's not it's not overly complex, which is good, but it's convoluted, if that makes sense. There's so much shit, so many materials to make things, but the crafting system itself is is awesome. It's very well done, and it seems to be worthwhile to actually craft things in this game. Now, those are all the good things about the game. I'm not going to make this review super, super, super long. Those are the things that I have ab almost absolutely no issue with, and I and I enjoyed those parts of the game. Now, let's get into the bad stuff. The things I do not like about New World, and which will definitely tie into my ultimate decision of whether or not I'm going to be playing this game on launch. Alright, time for the bad. So... The theme of this game is way off. You know, in the good section, I talked a lot about the world. And in my opinion, the world itself in any MMORPG is one of the most important parts of the game. It's what makes you feel immersed. It's what makes you feel like you want to learn the story or lore if they're, you know, if it's good. It makes you want to discover locations and things. And the open world of New World is nice. And there's a lot of things you can find and discover and, and, and pick up. However, uh, the theme and the story of this don't connect at all. At least they didn't with me. Let me give you an example. When you start a new character in Final Fantasy XIV, you, you know, the game sets up the story. And we know XIV is very, very narrative driven. The game sets up the story wildly with cutscenes at the very beginning. So you know exactly who you are and, and what your goal is as a new adventurer, right? As a new player starting out in Final Fantasy XIV. The same can be said about Final Fantasy XI. Even the same can be said about World of Warcraft, though much more shallow in World of Warcraft, you know, it gives you a small cut scene and has a voiceover of who you are and where you're starting out as an adventurer, and then you can go from there. And the world you step into in all these games reflects that. Same with Assurance Call, where it gives you a brief story. This is back in 1999. It gives you a brief story how you got to that world, and then you're dropped there. You know, you're given a basic tutorial, and then you're just free to roam around in the world, which is more comparable to New World because it's a very open world game. Now... New World starts you off with a great opening cutscene that sets it up. So you're like, oh, great. We're going to this island that nobody ever returns from. It's corrupted. There's undead there. It's insane. No one knows what's there. No one's ever come back. So that's kind of what you're set up for. You get into the classic, cliche, stereotypical shipwreck at the beginning of the launch experience. That's kind of the tutorial. And then, you know, it's all corrupted and everything. And it still goes with that tone. But the second the tutorial is over, all of a sudden this island is insanely populated with living, breathing people. There's cities, structures, you know, towns that have been there clearly for a long time. And everyone's just happy, cheery, running around. There's undead in, in settlements and there's still corrupted areas. But overall, it does not match what the game set up as where you are going as a new character. You know, you're not starting from oh man we've got to build civilization from scratch because we're stranded here no it's oh this is already a thriving economy you know it just it just kind of has some some shitty areas kind of like you know you you, you let me put it this way you go into this world expect uh expecting detroit is where you're gonna land but uh you come out and uh 
you're just in Montana, I guess. I don't know. It just doesn't really line up. And it's uh, it definitely pulled me out of the world in my experience. It made me not give a fucking shit about really anything that I was doing because it just, yeah. Anyway, the next thing I'm going to say uh, that I didn't like, and this one is very subjective, and I understand that. And remember, everything I'm saying, both good and bad, are just my opinions. My opinions are just as valuable as yours, which is not at all. So if you disagree, great. If you're going to just rage in the comments about something I liked or didn't like and you did or didn't, you know, go fuck yourself. I don't care. But uh, the aesthetic. Now, what I mean by aesthetic is not graphics or the appeal. What I mean is the the uh, kind of the aesthetic feel that they chose with the direction of the armor, weapons, and things like that. It's very, very reminds me of... Uh, like the old, like 17, 1800s, uh, Britain and France mixed in with a little bit of fantasy, if that makes any kind of sense. It's really hard to explain. I mean, and I did get to look and I looked at the auction house and scrolled down and there does seem to be some very high fantasy, you know, armor, you know, cool type fantasy armor appeal as you get to the max level. But I obviously, with most people in the beta, not a max level, I didn't actually physically get to see any of it, but I saw the icons in the auction house, and it seemed to be more in that direction. Me, personally, I'm a very big high fantasy guy, thus playing Final Fantasy games, 14, playing WoW, playing, you know, the um, Demon Souls games, Elder Scrolls games. I really love that high fantasy Lord of the Rings type shit, all right? Make fun of me all you want, but that's, that's just what I'm into, and this game doesn't really, you know, scratch that itch. Uh... Another thing that really, really stuck out and bothered me was the amount of clutter on the screen in this game. There's so much shit popping up in your face all the time from quest names to, you know, all kinds of shit of that nature. You know, you see, and sorry, by the way, my phone going off. Every time I do a video, someone wants to start texting me. But you see all of this stuff flashing in your face and it doesn't help that every, almost every single object in the environment is gatherable and crafting so every time you walk by everything the names of everything is popping up and i looked through the settings and you can't turn that off as far as i can tell and so you're just your face is just fucked non-stop with clutter everywhere you go which is really distracting and yeah, I didn't like that part. And on top of that, you get pop-ups for every little thing that happens. There's sound effects, which I'll get to. The combat sound effects, uh, especially for certain weapons, are really, really annoying. Like when you use the two-handed hammer, it sounds like you're, you're fucking Thor in the Marvel movies. It, it's really distracting to me personally. But some other sounds that every time you kill an enemy you get like this loud chime sound and at any time you get any points towards anything not distributable points just like some experience towards a weapon skill it makes a sound and it's it gets really 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 repetitive and annoying to the point where i started just turning all the sounds off okay now here's the next thing and this all the other stuff that i've listed that's bad so far i can deal with i could deal with it if everything else is great but the biggest problem i have with new world is the combat the combat is boring it's drab it's terrible and i have yet to be sold on any mmorpg going with pure 100 percent action combat because i've never played a game with pure action combat in an mmo and had it be good i i played a little bit of terra terra sorry excuse me it was acceptable but I think the best option is to either go tab target or to go a, a hybrid of action and tab target. But going pure action has, so far has never worked out in my opinion. Is that to say it's impossible that a company could get it working really well? No, not at all. But so far I have yet to be convinced. And New World is no exception here. The combat is boring as fuck. It doesn't help that you can only have two weapons equipped at a time and you have to switch between them with the keys one and two. And every weapon you're holding can only have a maximum of three abilities on your hotbar at a time, which is dull as fucking dishwater to me. And it doesn't help also that most of the abilities look the same, uh, especially when you start wielding the two-handed weapons and the ranged weapons. A lot of the abilities look the exact same. Like there's no distinction there it bored me the combat in this game bores me to tears and of course because 
Also, there's bugs where, you know, the different terrain elevations while you're fighting. If you're fighting on a small hill, you you don't actually miss in terms of you're never actually going to miss regardless of your weapon skill. Like you swing and it hits them, but it says miss. That doesn't happen in the game. But you could miss even though it looks like you hit them spot on and no numbers pop up because of some slight elevation change. Uh, the combat is just I, the best way I can put it. It's, it's not intuitive. It's dull. And it gets even worse when you start getting into group content. Like when you do dungeons, which I got to do the first dungeon and I finally got to do some PvP off stream. And they're complete boring Zerg fests. PvP is a little more interesting than the PvE, but it's just a Zerg fest. Everyone ganging up. It's like a fucking prison riot on steroids in PvP. And in PvE, yeah, the first dungeon, literally all the mobs in the dungeon are the exact same mobs that are out in the open world that you've been fighting on these quests a billion times, which I'll get into questing in a second. And they look the same, the only difference is they might be slightly bigger and they have an elite health bar. But they don't have any new mechanics that I could see, they don't do anything different. And it's just a Zerg fest, you just all go down and beat on them in like a prison riot and just go through the dungeon, no problem. The, the, the air quotes puzzles they put in the dungeon are not intuitive at all they just you click something go to the next room and you find a thing that you can pull in that room and then keep going so you can tell that the pve content especially the dungeon is very tacked on last minute is how it feels like oh shit if this game's just pure pvp it's gonna fail we have to have some kind of dungeons and so they just threw this together and shoved it in as far as raids are concerned i don't know if those are going to exist at all i haven't heard anything for or against them they'll probably add them eventually i imagine but as of now the pve content feels tacked on and really boring the questing is repetitive as fuck and not just repetitive in the sense of the same quest you've done in every other mmo where you're an errand boy because that's true here too but it's also repetitive in the sense that you'll go to an area that i like, kill these zombies in this area you're like okay and then you'll do that and you'll go back and turn it in. Then there, you'll get another quest from another guy in the same town or a different town to go to that exact same area and kill zombies again. And it's it's so annoying. And it, it just bored me to tears, to be 100% honest. Not intuitive at all. The PvE feels like it's bare bones minimum. You have to have PvE in this game, so might as well have it in there in any way you can, right? Um, another thing in the negatives here is the optimization is pretty poor uh not like frames per second but like render distances and keep in mind i'm on a 5900 a ryzen 5900x uh 32 gigs of ram an rtx 3080 founders edition and max settings my gpu didn't even hit 100 percent use and uh it still takes you know a lot of things me to be right next to them for that actually fully render in so the optimization is not great i know that's something that can be fixed in the future but right now, it's not great. I didn't have any frames per second issues, but it's very distracting when you're running around and you're seeing things load in, if that makes sense. Now, a lot of games, including the upcoming Asses of Creation, and a lot of games have in the past have tried something similar, where they try to do this big, overarching governing governor systems and tax rates and trade rates and all these things that, you know, where a guild or a faction, and there's three factions in this game, by the way, can control land and, you know, dictate rates and things like that. And I think that's an interesting idea and concept. Uh, it's in this game, but it seems overly... I didn't get too involved with it, obviously, because I wasn't in a guild. But from looking at it and researching it, it seems overly complex. Something boring that I'd have no interest in participating in. Uh, I mean, obviously, there's there's that fun section of your guild controls this land that's so fun, right? But at the same time, all that other shit seems very uninteresting to me. And it's overly complex and a time waster is what it feels like for these people that are doing it. Now, if you disagree and you're really into that, that's great. But I think if you're going to have a system like this in an MMO, you can do a much better, a much better job of it than New World is doing. Uh, the... Next thing I want to talk about is traveling. So the map is pretty huge. It takes a long time to get to one point to the other. There are no mounts in this game. You can fast travel if you're not in a, uh, a town, if you're not in a rested area, as it were. You can't fast travel anywhere except for whatever inn that you're bound to, you're checked in at. So one town that you're checked in at. 
and you can only do that once an hour. There are no mounts in this game. The other times you can teleport is if you're in a rested area, you can fast travel to any town or settlement that you've discovered, but it has a cost, not a money cost, a cost of, I can't remember the name of the item, but you get it from killing mobs and you get it from doing quests and, and shit like that. So you can run out of that and then be unable to fast travel if that's what happens. And the reason why that's such a cock in the ass is because you have to get to a lot of, the, the quests are so go this far away and so spread out and like scattered like darts on a dartboard that you have to travel a lot. So you're gonna spend a lot of time walking your ass from point A to point B, which takes a long time. And enemies have to be like 10 to 15 levels lower than you before they'll stop aggroing you on site. So it gets really annoying and they chase you forever, even if they're way under level. So it just gets really annoying going from place to place with no mount, you know, and I think a part of that is because they want you to gather and cra all the crafting materials on the way. Since, as I said earlier, every fucking node is flashing in your face and you can mine it, mine and harvest and skin everything. Uh, so, I don't know, like, it's... If, if, if I was more immersed in the world, going back to theme and story and how the world is set up for you, that probably wouldn't bother me as much because I'd be more interested in exploring as I went along, but that's just not the case here. Um, anyway, guys, overall... That's my review of New World. Is it a terrible game? Is it god awful? No. Is it f fun and like, you know, making me want want to waste my time on it? Absolutely not either. If you are playing Final Fantasy XIV, Elder Scrolls Online, World of Warcraft, or whatever, are your main games, but you're looking for something else you can know life and really, really dive headfirst into and spend months, if not years, playing, uh, in my opinion, New World is not it. Maybe they'll make some changes in the coming years and it will turn out to be better and they'll improve on a lot of these things I said I don't like, but I doubt it. Most MMOs, if they don't come out of the gate swinging, uh, they fail pretty quickly. So those are my thoughts and opinions. If you've played the beta, what are yours down below? I'd love to hear you know your agreements, disagreements. As always, guys, my streaming schedule is here on YouTube in my About section and also it's on my uh, Twitch page itself under schedule. If you like the video, please just like it and share it around. It helps me out a lot. If you didn't, that's fine. You can give it a thumbs down, leave a mean comment, and go fuck yourself. But as always, my friends, keep it real.